So piecewise defined functions are just functions that are defined in more than one piece. So instead of just having a rule or formula that applies to any number you might plug in for x, you have more than one possibility and which thing you do depends on what kind of number you put in for x, what category it falls into. And this is one of those things that might take you a minute to get the hang of what's really going on here, but once you get it, it's pretty straightforward and easy. So here we have an example of a piecewise defined function. f of x equals 12x if x is less than 5, and 10x if x is greater than or equal to 5. So what this function does to a number that you put in for x depends on whether that number is less than 5 or greater than or equal to 5. It does one thing if the number is less than 5. It does another thing if it's greater than or equal to 5. So let's look at examples of actually evaluating this. If I ask, okay, what is f of 1? What do you get if you put 1 in for x? Well, first you've got to think, is 1 a number that's less than 5, or is it a number that's greater than or equal to 5? It's less than 5, of course, so we're going to be doing this. We're going to be calculating 12 times, remember x was 1, so 12 times 1 is 12. So f of 1 is 12. What about f of 3? Well, 3 is also less than 5, so to calculate f of 3, we take 12 times 3, and we get 36. What about f of 5? Is 5 less than 5? No, it's greater than or equal to 5. So anytime the number we put in for x is a number that's greater than or equal to 5, what we do to it is we take 10 times that number. So 10 times 5 is 50. What about f of 20? Is 20 less than 5 or is it greater than or equal to 5? It's greater than or equal to 5, so we do this. We calculate 10 times 20 and we get 200. In each case, we just get one number. There has to be just one value of the function for each number we put in for x. So if we put in 1, we get 12. If we put in 3, we get 36. If we put in 5, we get 50. If we put in 20, we get 200. We can put in any number and figure out exactly what we're going to get out based on this rule. Now here's an example of a graph of a piecewise defined function. So this function takes whatever you give it and gives you either two times that number if that number is between 0 and 1, that number plus 1 if the number is between 1 and 5, and it just gives you 4 if the number you put in is greater than or equal to 5. Notice it didn't say anything at all about what happens if the number you put in is less than 0. So that would mean this function is, is undefined then. You're just not allowed to put in a number less than 0. So if I asked, what's f of negative 2, that would be undefined. But if I ask, what's f of 0? 2 times 0, which is 0. And you can see that on the graph. Here's where x is 0 and y is 0. If x is 1 half, that's between 0 and 1, so we do 2 times 1 half and get 1. So here's the point on the graph where x is 1 half and y is 1. What about if x is 3? Well, now we're into this region. 3 is between 1 and 5, so we do this to it. We take 3 plus 1 and we get 4. What's f of 2? Well, that would be 2 plus 1, which is 3. What's f of 5? Well, now we're down to here. 5 falls into the greater than or equal to 5 category, and so what we get out is 4. What's f of 6? 4. What's f of 7.3? 4. f of anything greater than or equal to 5 is always going to be 4. Now let's take a minute to look at how this graph is constructed. If you had to draw this graph yourself based on how this function is set up, how could you do that? Well, first of all, if the function were just plain 2x, the graph would be a straight line like this. 
This is the graph of the function where f of x is always equal to 2x. Notice it's a straight line with a slope 2 and a y-intercept here at 0. Now, we don't have all of this line. We just have the part of the line where x is between 0 and 1, greater than or equal to 0, but less than 1. So I only want the points on that line that have x coordinates between 0 and 1 including the point where x is 0, not including the point where x is 1. Now let's look at the next part. This is where f of x is x plus 1. And if f of x were always x plus 1, the graph would be a line like this. If I, so we got 0, 1, we got 1, 2, we got 2, 3, we got 3, 4. All along this line, the y coordinates are equal to whatever x is plus 1. Notice that's a line with slope 1 and y-intercept 1. And we don't have all the points on this line. We just have the points with x-coordinates between 1 and 5. So here's the point where x is 1. Here's where the point would be if we included the, the 5 point itself. We stopped just short of that. But we did include all the points with x-coordinates between 1 and 5. And we included the point where x was 1. Now, what about the last part? For f of x to equal 4, that would just be a horizontal line going right straight across where all the y-coordinates are just 4. And we don't have all of that line. We really just have the part of it where the x's are greater than or equal to 5. So we don't have the part over here where x-coordinates are less than 5. We only have the x-coordinates that are 5 or more. So there's the graph. Notice it does pass the vertical line test for being the graph of a function. And if I want to know what f of any particular number is, I could look at how this is defined, this rule here, or I could just go to a point on the graph. What's f of 4? Look at the point on the graph with an x-coordinate of 4, and the y-coordinate that goes with it is 5. Here's a real-world example of where you might see a piecewise function. Say there's a, like a website or a mail order company that when you order for the, from them charges a shipping and handling charge that depends on the amount of the order. And here's the rule. They charge 20% on an order of $30 or less, and then just a flat $5 on an order of more than $30. So if the amount of your order is any dollar amount, $30 or less, f of x is 0.20x, 20% of x, if x is less than or equal to 30. And then it's just plain 5, $5, if x is greater than 30. So if you order $10 worth of stuff, they add on 20% of 10, which is 2. If you order $25 worth of stuff, they add on... 20% of $25, which is whatever that is. But if you order, say, $35 worth of stuff, they add on $5. And one more example. I got this from some book or other, maybe ours. But we got this rule here. The national defense budget outlay, V, in billions of dollars, for veterans in the United States from 1990 to 2000 can be approximated by the model V equals, and then there's one formula that we use if T is between 0 and 5, and another formula that we use if T is between 6 and 10, where T represents the year, T equal to 0 corresponding to 1990. Use the model to find total veteran outlays in 1994, and 2000. In other words, we need to evaluate this function when t is 4 and also when t is 10. So first, when t is 4, v of 4, well, 4 is between 0 and 5. The number we're using for t here falls into the first category. So we're plugging 4 in for t here. We're calculating negative 0.234 times 4 squared plus 3.01 times 4 
plus 28.9. And if you calculate that out, it comes to 37.196. So that means 37.196 billions of dollars for veterans in 1994. And then for the year 2000, that's when we put in 10 for T. So V of 10, well, 10 is down here between 6 and 10. So we use this formula. We calculate 2.41 times 10 plus 22.4. And that works out to be 46.5, so $46.5 billion.